Hey guys, how are you? Welcome back to the blog. I'm Bud, Vice President of a Foreign Affair in Phoenix, Arizona, but you knew that. So, guys who have been watching my most recent blogs have been commenting about how they like the, the kind of larger life themes, if you will, getting away a little bit from the how to successfully correspond, how to navigate a social, how to this and how to that, and just talk about those larger themes which have an impact on our decision overall to get on a plane and go and meet somebody. So, I'm going to pull, uh, pull something out of my college days, uh, which were not that long ago uh, and, and just see if I can run it by you guys and see if this has some kind of an impact on your decision whether or not to get on a plane and go and meet somebody and what that will ultimately look like right so there's a Russian poet by the name of Yevgeny Yevtushenko who wrote what I think is a really really brilliant poem and I'll just just read you a little bit of it right so we've got we've got Shel Silverstein going on we've got Leo Boscalia going on and now we've got the Russian poet Yevgeny Yevtushenko who last time I checked was a professor at the University of Tulsa. And anyway, he wrote a lot of poetry, but here's one that I, I absolutely like. So think about what he's saying in this poem for just a moment. The poem is called People. No people are uninteresting. Their fate is like the chronicle of planets. Nothing in them is not particular, and planet is dissimilar from planet. And if a man lived in obscurity, making his friends in that obscurity, obscurity is not uninteresting. To each, his world is private, and in that world one excellent minute, and in that world one tragic minute, these are private. In any man who dies, there dies with him his first snow, and kiss, and fight, it goes with him. So think about that for a minute. In any man who dies, there dies with him his first snow, and kiss, and fight, it goes with him. No people are uninteresting, their fate is like the chronicle of planets. What Yevdyshenko is essentially saying is that every single individual on this planet is within himself or herself you know, an entire world. You have a world of experience and perceptions, you know, a world of feelings, a world of memories, you know, just, just a, a life collection, a collage, if you will, of people and meetings and places and events that is completely unique to you, you know, the, the person from whom all of that stems. It's kind of interesting when you think about the billions of people that we have on the planet and every single one of us has a unique thumbprint. There are no two that are the same anywhere that you go. And essentially, Yevdyshenko is saying there is no life on this planet that is not significant all by itself, all alone. It, it's, it's, it's as significant as, as a planet, as, as an entirely separate world. It's obviously a very, um, and it's a very deep uh, concept, but the kind of stuff that you write poetry about, right? So let's go on a little bit. There are left books and bridges and painted canvas and machinery whose fate is to survive, right? These are all the things that we leave behind when we go. But what has gone is also not nothing. By the rule of the game, something has gone. Not people die, but worlds die in them. Whom we knew as faulty, the earth's creatures, of whom essentially what did we know? Was he a brother of a brother, friend of friends, lover of lover? We who knew our fathers and everything in nothing. You know what he's saying is that the people around us that we think we know, you know, we really don't know because we haven't lived their exact life. And there's all kinds of experience that, you know, we as individuals live through that never gets shared or talked about with others, right? So I think you get the point, right? Here's this whole entire world. Every single person is an individual world. This is kind of an anti-war poem that Yevgeny Yevtushenko wrote. I think it's absolutely brilliant. He also kind of spoke out against the communist themes of his day, basically saying no matter how you spin socialism, people really are never going to be exactly the same and equal. And it's, it's remarkable and profound, and I absolutely love it. So, you know what, guys? Sometimes when we stand at the fork in the road and we wonder whether or not we're worthy enough to succeed in this process, whether or not we ordinary guys can get on a plane and go and meet an extraordinarily beautiful, intelligent, remarkable woman in this process, do we have enough to offer them. And all by ourselves, we worry about those things, right? We worry, is my house big enough? Is my car the right kind of car? Is my financial situation stable enough? Do I have all of these things that are going to make me a successful life partner for some of these really, really amazing women? And we think that sometimes because we've had years and years and years of the media and our culture telling us, again, if you don't have Bill Gates money or Brad Pitt's looks, you shouldn't be looking for a wife at all in this process. And of course, that's not true. When you get on the plane and you do go, the 10% of you over Overall, who will actually get on the plane ultimately and go and meet somebody, you're going to meet women who think and feel exactly like you do. Am I good enough for this person? Do I have plenty to offer this person? Will I make a good wife? Will I make a good mother? Do I have enough to complete this person and make his life happy? And that's why when so many people in this process do actually meet and get face to face, and that is absolutely our challenge, getting enough of you guys on the plane to meet 
you know, the tens of thousands of women who come to us hoping to meet somebody so that those love stories can be written and can unfold. But I want you to think about a few things as you're standing at that fork in the road and wondering whether or not you can be successful as they relate to Yevgeny Yevdushenko's poem about people. And one of those is, what is unique about you? I mean, what is your special quality or your special strength? What are some things about you that you don't see in most of the other people around you? We're talking about positives, obviously. What are those things that you can bring to a relationship that are going to really enhance that relationship, that are going to make that relationship relationship experience for her, whoever she turns out to be, different from any other relationship experience that she's going to have. Now, every single guy listening to me right now has a quality or a gift or something to share. Think about that because you want to be able to verbalize that or show it or demonstrate it when you get into the courtship process with these exciting, beautiful women, right? So what is that? Well, what are your gifts? Maybe you're a great dancer. Maybe you love to dance. You love to go out dancing. I tell you right now, if you meet women in Latin America, that is a strength. They love to dance. And oh my God, they can dance. So if you like to salsa and merengue and tango, so do they. So when you meet them, your courtship will be full of that wonderful, sexy, seductive Latin dancing that they absolutely love to be a part of. Maybe you give a great massage, right? That's something obviously you're not gonna unfold on a first date, I hope. But at some point, that's gonna become pretty important. That's definitely something I would put out there on a second or third date, just letting them know, ultimately, I give a pretty darn good massage. I bet most of the women that you meet in this process haven't had one in a really long time. You know, maybe you're a great kisser. We'll let that unfold as it will. Maybe you're very creative in gift giving. Maybe you, you know, you don't buy the random $10 gift card. Maybe you can find a very appropriate gift, wrap it beautifully, and give it at an appropriate moment. Maybe you just have a real knack for that. Whatever your gift is, guys, know what your gifts are. Know what's special about you and what you have to offer somebody that probably most of the guys that she's going to meet don't have or don't have to offer. What's special in your world? What's special in your surroundings? I grew up in uh, a small town on the coast of Maine, and it's absolutely beautiful. All I wanted to do was leave as long as I lived there, I swear to God. And then once I left, all I ever wanted to do for the last 30 years is go back. And uh, what an amazing, beautiful coastal place with restaurants and fishing villages and every, I mean, I swear to God, it is the setting for every romantic novel ever written. And uh, can you believe I ever left that, right? You know, you meet somebody and you fall in love, you know, someday, sweetheart, we're going to go there. We'll live there, we'll retire there. And every day we'll have the beautiful coast and the long beaches and the ocean and the sunsets over the water, something like that. Whatever it is, guys, there's something in your world, your city, your job, your surroundings, your friends, whatever it is, there's something really special about your surroundings that really make someone's life happy or complement somebody's life. Know what those things are, focus on them so that you can verbalize them or demonstrate them to somebody during the courtship process. And remember that when you're standing at that crossroads, guys, you know, I'm not trying to pull a Mr. Rogers on you here, but you are unique. There's absolutely nobody like you. We've all had our, our good moments and our bad moments, and we all know what our opportunities are, right? But you absolutely are one person. There's not another one like you. You have something to offer somebody that everybody else that she meets will not have, but it's important to know what that is, to focus on it, be able to speak to it when you're in courtship or demonstrate it so you can really knock the socks off of some girl who's absolutely hoping that you will have something special and unique about you so she can fall in love with you and have the realization of that great love story that she came to this process process to find, right? It's a little lesson from Yevgeny Yevdyshenko, guys. I absolutely love it. I hope it's meaningful. The poem is called People. You can find it all over the internet. Yevgeny Yevdyshenko, a great Russian author. Hope this is meaningful, guys. We'll talk again soon.